Howdy folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and we're out on the trail here with the Scott Patron. This is no doubt about it, the most striking e-mountain bike that we have ever tested. But the question is, is this bike only about its looks? We've been testing this bike for the past few weeks and in this video we're going to be giving an overview of the Scott Patron. We're going to be talking about how it rides on the trail, what we like about this bike and what we think could be improved. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So the Scott Patron is a brand new model for this year. It replaces the outgoing Genius E-Ride and as you can probably tell, it looks nothing like its predecessor. The Patron is designed to be a versatile all-terrain machine. It features 29 inch wheels and 160 mm of travel front and rear. It's based around a four bar suspension design with a proprietary Fox manufactured nude shock which sits inside the frame's top tube. Now, as with many of Scott's mountain bikes, both the fork and the shock are cabled up to the twin lock remote up at the handlebar. The bottom lever activates the dropper post, while the top two levers allow you to cycle between three different suspension modes. There's descend, traction control, and lockout. Now, why the heck would you need remote adjustable suspension on a bike with a motor? Well, that's a very good question, and we'll be diving into the reasons behind it shortly. The Patron is powered by a Bosch Performance CX Gen 4 motor, which delivers up to 85 newton meters of peak torque. The motor itself has been rotated upwards to sit almost vertically in the frame, and that allows this huge 750 watt hour battery to sit lower down and in front of the motor. Completing the Bosch Smart System is a Kiox 300 display, which sits perched above the stem, and the LED controller, which sits next to the left hand grip. There's nothing overly radical about the geometry of the Scott Patron. We've got a 65 degree head angle and a 76.9 degree seat tube angle. And on the medium size that I've been testing, a 445 millimeter reach. One thing that does stand out though is the fact that the chain stays on this bike are quite long. The rear center length is 454 millimeters and that means on the small and medium frame sizes, the rear center length is actually longer than the reach measurement. For 2022, there are three Scott Patron models coming into Australia, and prices will start at a bit over 11 grand for the Patron E-Ride 920. The bike that we've been testing is the top of the range model. This is the Scott Patron E-Ride 900 tuned. Bit of a mouthful, that one. This is the only model to get the carbon frame, and the retail price on this is 15,499 Australian dollars. This bike comes specced with a factory series Fox 38 fork and a transfer dropper post. It's got a SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain with an X01 rear derailleur. We've got Shimano XT brakes, a snazzy one-piece carbon cockpit from Syncros, and 2.6 inch wide Maxxis dissector tires with the XO Plus casings. Confirmed weight for our Scott Patron test bike is 23.86 kilos, which is on the heavier side for a high-end full-powered e-mountain bike. It's nearly two kilos heavier than the Canyon Spectral On we tested recently. As to how this bike rides on the trail, well, thanks to its high volume rubber, generous suspension travel and restrained geometry, I found the Patron to be a comfortable and capable all-rounder. It's an easy bike to just get on a ride with a grounded ride quality that inspires confidence and handles varied terrain with minimal fuss. The generous weight and long wheelbase contribute to a very planted and tractor-like ride quality, allowing it to plow through obstacles and build momentum quickly on the descents. I have to say that the Bosch motor is fantastic. It provides plenty of power and loads of control, especially in the adaptive EMTB mode. Along with a steep seat tube angle and those long chain stays, the Patron is a remarkably adept climber. It stays planted on steep pinches with no errant wandering from the front wheel, and on technical sections where you might be forced to pause on the pedals in order to get over an obstacle, the Bosch motor delivers a noticeable degree of overrun in order to maintain your riding speed and momentum. As with most EMTBs, the main limitation on technical climbs ends up being ground clearance, but this is where the twin lock remote comes in. 
Now, initially I was very skeptical of the remote lockout, mostly because of the added clutter that it brings to the handlebars. Simply calling it a remote lockout though is selling the twin lock system short, however, because it's all about that middle traction control mode, which makes the rear shock firmer and limits rear travel to 115 millimeters. While it does improve pedal efficiency and steepen the effective seat tube angle, the main advantage of the traction control mode is the fact that it lifts the dynamic bottom bracket height, providing you with significantly more ground clearance. With traction control engaged, pedal strikes almost become a non-issue on the Patron, and that allows you to keep the power down during those crucial moments on awkward tech climbs. Sure, the twin lock's extra levers and cables may not be the cleanest or most ergonomic solution, but it no doubt contributes to the Patron being one of the best climbing e-bikes I've ridden. Now, while those long chain stays do contribute to the Patron's climbing abilities and its overall stability at speed, they do limit agility on twistier trails. The rear wheel feels like it trails behind you, and that makes it harder to thread the whole bike through tight switchbacks. I also found it difficult to lift up the front wheel, especially with that heavy battery inside the down tube. Now it's worth noting that taller riders on the large and extra large frame sizes are likely to have a more balanced overall experience on the Patron. Shorter riders and those who are chasing a more agile and playful ride quality may be better off at looking at a bike with a mullet setup or something like the Specialized Levo or Canyon Spectral On. Also, despite there being plenty of it, I didn't find the suspension to be quite as plush on this bike as some others in this category, like the Trek Rail. In particular, the Forks Fit 4 damper lacks the sensitivity of the Superior Grip 2 damper, and that sees more trail chatter transmitted up to the grips. It's also not as well controlled on bigger hits either, so we'd recommend bigger and more aggressive riders add a volume spacer or two inside the air spring in order to keep the fork riding higher in its travel. Ultimately though, since the remote controlled Fit 4 damper adds little to the Patron's climbing performance, we'd just rather it came with a Grip 2 damper in the first place. Likewise, I've not been blown away by the rear suspension's small bump compliance. This may be due to the shock using a bushing for the lower eyelet, which undergoes a large degree of rotation as the suspension goes through its travel. Also, it has to be said that the stock tyres do hold back the Patron on rowdier trails. The Maxxis Dissector is okay on the rear, but this bike really needs a more aggressive front tyre, something like an Asagai with the softer Max Grip compound. I've got some other complaints with the spec on this bike. Both the medium and large frame sizes only get a 150mm stroke dropper post, which I think is too short for a bike that's as big and as capable as this. While I did find the stock setup to be comfortable, it's worth noting that the integrated cockpit does make adjustments trickier, especially if you wanted a higher front end. A more pressing issue I encountered on our test bike was the lack of armoring underneath the down tube. Now this part of the frame hangs very low due to the battery placement, though unfortunately the plastic guard is quite small, leaving much of the carbon exposed to rock strikes. As such, we'd like to see a more substantial skid plate employed for this otherwise vulnerable area. Now as per usual, I put the Scott Patron through our standardized range test, and I was mighty impressed with just how much ride time and elevation gain I was able to get out of that big 750 watt hour battery. If you'd like to know more about the range testing and how the Patron stacks up against some of the other e-mountain bikes we've been testing lately, then make sure you click the link in the video description below to check out the full review of this bike right here. And that folks brings us to the verdict of the Scott Patron. And no doubt about it, this is one polarizing e-mountain bike. Its striking aesthetic certainly won't be for everyone, and nor will its integrated cockpit or the twin lock remote. Indeed, its fast rolling tires and remote lockable suspension should provide some further clues that the Patron is no heavy duty enduro sled. While its descending performance would no doubt be improved with a grip two fork and more aggressive tires, I suspect that riders who are that way inclined will naturally gravitate towards the Ransom E-Ride instead. In comparison, the Patron is more of a long travel trail bike with suspension and geometry that's geared towards all terrain riding. Its powerful motor and big battery give it fantastic long range potential, which is matched by the comfortable riding position and its stable handling. Add in the twin lock's nifty traction control mode, and the Patron stands as one of, if not the best climbing e-mountain bikes we've ever tested. So for those who dig the integrated style and are after a versatile long distance hauler, there are a few bikes on the market that will offer the same experience as the Scott Patron. As mentioned before, the full review of this bike is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. If you're keen to check it out, then click that link in the video description below. 
Otherwise, I'd be keen to hear what you guys think of the Scott Patron. If you've got any questions for me about this bike, drop those into the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Tooroo. Ha, 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 ha.